Hello again. Way back in 1981, way back in 1981, there was a game called Rogue. Allowed people to play on their computer, go down in a dungeon, explore things, fight monsters, gather treasure, all the usual dungeony kind of things. And it was very popular. It was a closed source game. It was put out by a company, you know, trying to make money. And after a while, the development stopped and the game kind of died. The problem was, or maybe not the problem, but the situation was it was very, very popular. And at that point, other companies and other individuals and then eventually the open source community tried to start making clones of this rogue game. And they, they eventually created a whole genre of games called roguelikes. And over the years, there have been dozens, if not hundreds, of different ones. One of the early clones of Rogue was called Moria. If you've seen Lord of the Rings, you know what Moria is. It's a big dungeon where you go down with monsters, treasures, and so forth. And, of course, all these games in these days were text-based because graphics were really bad or non-existent. One of the bigger ones, around 1987 or so, is called NetHack. And although it's not really currently updated very much, it, is, it does still work on modern computers. It's included in a lot of Linux distributions. Ubuntu is one of them. And let's take a look at NetHack this time. Let's go. First of all, I've got the Wikipedia page up here for NetHack. And, well, what's it say? A single-player roguelike video game based on Rogue, 1987, with ASCII graphics. It's, it's kind of a graphic game. You see the map drawn, you see the monsters, you see the characters, but it's all done in ASCII text. That's not to say there aren't graphical versions of it, because there are. But we're going to look at the basic text-based version today, uh, based on an earlier game called Hack, which was a clone of Rogue, pretty much just what I just said. But you can see that you can read about the history and the gameplay and a lot of the stuff they mentioned there, there's a whole section on character death. This game loves to kill you. If you play five minutes, you're doing good. If you play a half an hour, you're doing great. It's one of those games, sooner or later, you will die. Probably the closest modern game I can compare it to is something like FTL. It's all randomly generated. Random things happen. Uh, the universe is created randomly. But there are certain things in it that you have to do and chances are you're never going to beat it. The fun, though, is seeing how far you can get. Your character levels up, you get new magic items, you get treasures, just like any other dungeon kind of game. But this is one you're not going to beat it. Almost certainly not going to beat it. It just goes on and on, randomly creating things, and it's just fun to play. Don't try to win. Uh, other roguelike games, if you've ever seen Diablo, well, of course you've seen Diablo, but other than Diablo being more real-time, it's the same kind of thing. You've got a flat map where the guy runs around, he fights monster monsters, he picks up treasures, he goes on to different areas, up and down staircases. It's the same kind of thing. The only real difference is NetHack is not real-time. You take your turns. If you see a monster coming for you, you could look up strategies. You could look at your keyboard controls and see what it is you want to do next. You can check your inventory for the right tools or the right parts. If it sounds like you can do a lot of things with this game, you can. But let's uh, go on here. Um, you can get an idea here what the game looks like. You get, going with my mouse, mouse here, you can see you've got straight lines for walls, these little square rooms, rectangular rooms. Hallways are done with a little hashtag or pound signs. Uh, inside the rooms are various things. The little at symbol, the amp ampersand, is you. That's your character. The exclamation point is, I don't know, maybe a creature. The little parenthesis, some kind of treasure or something. Percent signs, monsters. Watch out for that. The uh, less than and greater than symbols are stairways up and down and so forth. Different, different symbols mean different things. And you have to play the game to find out exactly what's going on with these. Uh, this one here, the guy's name is Hacker the Conjurer. He's got strength, dexterity, constitution. If you're familiar with Dungeon and Dragons, these attributes will be familiar to you. 
Uh, dungeon level three. He's got 120 gold hit points, power, armor class, experience, and so forth. It's, it's basically it's like a Dungeon and Dragon character. Same kind of thing. And I said it's all text, and the basic game is all text. Although there are graphical interfaces like this one right here called Vulture's Eye. And this takes that text-based map and gives you a graphic interface over it to make it look well, like a lot more like Diablo, for example. Uh, there are other ones out besides just this one. Here's another one that makes it look more like, I would say that looks like a Game Boy game to me, some kind of Game Boy thing. And there's one here. Yeah, that's not much. But from the Wikipedia page, you can link to these various tile sets to make it look more like a modern game, if you want to. We're not going to do that today. There is a NetHack, NetHack Wiki, nethackwiki.com. I'll link to it in the, the, the notes below. And this has a lot of the same things if you want to read up about it. Very historically based. It's got a lot of good it, history behind it. Uh, there's that 3D thing again. And here, lastly, is the official NetHack web page. And as you can see, it's got a very 1980s look to it. Probably hasn't been updated in like 70 years. Okay, uh, 2014. Like I said, it's not really super maintained anymore. They do bug fixes and things to keep it working. But the version that's out right now, uh, version 3.6.1, has been out for a long time. So maybe they'll come up with a new version someday. Maybe they won't. But it doesn't matter because the old version works. Let's take a look at that now. As usual, I've got my command line up here. Net, hack, and of course I don't have it installed, so boom, no such file or directory. Okay, so this is a little different from the stuff we usually run into. When I do the sudo apt install nethack, it lists three different things. Nethack x11, nethack lisp, nethack console. One's graphical, one's a sort of a programming interface, and one is the console text-based version. That's the one we want. So sudo apt get install nethack console. And it's installing, and it's done. Okay, now it's installed, and of course, just to start it, you can do nethack. Copyright 85 to 2018 by those people. Shall I pick a character's race, role, gender, and alignment for you? Yes, no, ask, or quit. And you can go through and choose your own race, role, gender, and alignment if you want to. I'm going to let it choose just because, why not? Yes, for choose. Gives me the name Brian. It knows that because I'm the user logged in. I'm a priestess. Don't know where that came from. Uh, female elf chaotic. Is this okay? Yeah, why not? Okay, we'll go with it. So I got a choice of yes, start game. No, choose roll again. Okay, let's choose no and pick somebody else. Oh, it's going to make me pick. Okay, so I can choose one of these uh, character classes. Let's go with a Barbarian. They're usually simple enough to play. Human, Orc, or Random? Human. Male. Um, asterisk for Random. I don't care. Is this okay? Brian. Chaotic Male Human Barbarian. Sounds about right. Yes. Okay, so now there is a story involved with it. And you can read this yourself if you want to later on. But basically, I'm a newly trained plunderer. Um, for the sake of us all, go bravely. More. And you hit space to actually start the game. Hello, Brian. Welcome to NetHack. You are a chaotic male human barbarian. And then we've got the main map there in the middle of the screen. And the little, like I said, the little ampersand is me. F is my dog. And dollar sign there means there's gold here. Now, you'd, want, you'd think I'd use the mouse or the keypad or the little number arrows or something to make this game work. Not so simple. This game was designed for really old-style keyboards. And actually, this is, you notice I didn't try this one on the iPad. It doesn't work real well that way. You need a full-size keypad 
for the most part to make it work. There are quick reference sheets that are easily printable that shows e what each of the little letters on a keyboard does. Uh, things like semicolon to identify a symbol, A to use an item, I for inventory, J for jump, stuff like that. They're not super hard to learn, but there are a lot of a lot of keyboard commands, and of course everything is done through the keyboard. You don't play the ma with the mouse with this one at all. Movement, we haven't talked much about Vim yet, but this uses the Vim keys instead of the little arrow keys on your keyboard. It uses H, J, K, and L. H and L is right and left. K and J is up and down. So that takes a little getting used to. So I'm the little ampersand. I'm going to move over three to the right and one down. And Rex is the dog. I switched places with him because he was standing there. And there's four gold pieces. Something is engraved here on the headstone. You read. Wherever you let your wind go, wherever you be, let your wind go free. Keeping it in was the death of me. So don't hold it, let it out. It's full of these little funny jokes and headstones and hints and fortune cookies and things like that. But anyway, I was on that gold, so I want to pick that up. And pick that up is the comma. Oh. Okay, maybe I pick up the gold automatically. I knew that. Okay. Okay, so you can see the walls are the uh, up and down lines and the right and left lines. And the gaps in the walls are door, not doors, but openings. The little hashtag pound signs are corridors, which you can follow around. Like right here, for example, if I try to go up, it won't let me go up. There's nothing up there. So the corridor is basically you can move until you can't anymore. Here's a door. I go through the door. And as you go in, you can see more of the more of the room. There's an O thing here. What is that? The goblin throws an or it's an it's a goblin carrying a dagger. The goblin throws an orcish dagger. You're hit by an orcish dagger. The goblin misses. So now I'm right next to the goblin. If I move into him, that'll attack. And I killed the goblin. It's not usually that easy. You see here a goblin corpse. I'm going to keep it simple, so I'm not going to pick up the gold. This door is locked. Okay, so I will open the door. I press O for open. And what direction? Right. The door is locked. Now, if I have a lock pick, I could lock pick the lock. Let's do an inventory and see what I'm carrying. I have... Four gold pieces, a two-handed sword, an axe, an uncursed ringmail being worn, an uncursed food ration, which I will eat at some point, and an uncursed oil lamp. No lock pick. Okay, so I can't pick the lock. Maybe, though, maybe I can kick the lock. Control D to kick. Which direction? I want to kick to the right. Boom, and I kick the door open. Now that's another thing about NetHack that's kind of neat. You can interact with lots of different things. If there's a treasure chest on the floor, you can pick the lock. You can pick up the chest and take it with you. You can kick it open. You can try to loot it. You can do lots of different things, lots of different ways. Everything is very interactive. door just opened. There was no trick. But I go here and I move up and I move down. I can't go anywhere. So that's just a dead end. It happens. Lichen. You killed the lichen. Things that are here. A lichen corpse and an effervescent potion. More comma to pick up. Which one do I want to pick up? Uh, I definitely want the, the potion. May as well take the lichen corpse too, because, you know, if I get really hungry, I can eat that. 
Yes, really. Moving on. Moving up. There's a thing there. O2 food rations. Let's pick those up. Okay, so well, what's this? Oh, that's the wall. Okay. Go down, and as you can see here, I've got the greater greater than sign, which is the stairway down. I click on the greater than sign. It says I descend the stairs, and now I'm on the next level down. I've gone downstairs. Like most dungeon games, the deeper you go, the more dangerous it is. So the levels are tougher here. If you look down at the status line at the bottom of the screen, you've got dungeon level 2. Hit points, 16 out of 16, so I'm still full strength and other things. So, meanwhile, I, that D there looks like it's probably a creature. Let's go over and fight that. You miss the fox. The fox misses. The fox bites. You kill the fox. You kill the newt. And a lot of times you won't even see the creatures coming. They're just sort of there. Some creatures are just really, really tough. Some are not. And, of course, this is all randomly generated. So when I do eventually die and play this over again, it's going to be completely different. Pick up the garlic. You never know what you're going to get from one game to the next. Some are just super, super hard. Some you can go quite a long ways before you die. And then you go all that way, and it's a dead end. Kill the Jackal. Welcome to Experience Level 2. Okay, my level has gone up. I've gotten stronger and a little bit better. A large box. Okay, what is in the box? Back off. Open to the right. Seems like something lootable over there. Okay, so I'm going to... Sometimes you can't just hit a key. There are certain commands like pound loot. Well, no, not right there. I have to stand on it. Okay. There's a large box here. Loot it? Yes. Hmm, it turns out to be locked. I'm not going to worry about it right now. Meanwhile. Oh. Down at the bottom there we have a greater than sign, and here's a different greater than sign. Two different stairways down. Let's take this one. You descend the stairs. Kill the gnome. Okay, didn't even see a gnome was there. Ah, something to fight. You killed the dwarf. 268 gold pieces and several more objects. Okay, what? What do I want to pick up? Iron shoes, pick it. Oh, I got all kinds of good stuff there. Well, let's pick it all up. There's just so much stuff you can carry until it gets to be too heavy for you, but I'm not there yet. You have a little trouble lifting all this stuff. Okay. All right, so I should probably drop some things. Uh, what is heavy looking? 36 rocks. That sounds pretty heavy. D. Of course it's D. What do you want to drop? O for 36 rocks. Your movements are now unencumbered. So I was heavy before, now I'm not. And I'm going to walk around and explore some things. Whoa. Okay, let's go back up and see what that was. You killed the dwarf. Welcome to level three. 
And there are many objects here too. A wand of magic missile, that looks good. So I've got a bunch of stuff at this point. The Hobbit wields a dwarvish sword, short sword. The gnome lord, no, the gnome lord throws a dart. The dart hits the Hobbit. You kill the Hobbit. You kill the Gnome Lord. Well, okay then. Huh. Feel pretty good here today. Carrying too much to get through. I don't want to drop anything. I'm being greedy. Dart was poisoned. That can't be good. So you can see they're not all tiny little rooms. This one here is just a very large area. Now, what I should be doing is going through all these objects that I've found. I've killed a bunch of creatures, got a lot of treasure. There was a shop there a few minutes ago where I could sell things or buy things. Just trying to move through this quickly at this point. Go down another level. Oh boy, a bunch of things here. Should be dying soon. Uh, looking down at the bottom there, I have hit points 2 out of 50. I could eat food, I could heal things up, but I want to show you what it looks like to die. There's a falling rock trap here. You see a rock. A trap door in the ceiling open and a rock falls on your head. You hear the wailing of the banshee. But I'm not dead. And now I did. You die. Okay, so... I'll be honest, that lasted a lot longer than I expected it to. These games usually are very short, and to make it down to level 4 is eh, that's pretty good for me, because I'm not that good at this. But okay, now let's look and see what happens when you die. You die. More. Space. Do you want your possessions identified? Yeah, let's see what I was carrying. And it gives you quite a long report, because I had a lot of things. And a lot of things are unidentified when you have them. Um, okay, like the worthless pieces of green glass, the jade stones. I just picked up these gems and crystals, and they look good to me, but some of it's junk. Uh, uncursed diamond. You can, you can pick up cursed items also, which do various bad things to you. Until you identify them, you never know what you're going to get. Do you want to see your attributes? Yes. 
And there we go. Uh, I was a male fourth level, uh, opposed by lawful and neutral. When I died, I had zero hit points, which is not a big surprise. Out at maximum 50, you had nine magic power. I never did do any spells. Armor class was seven. You had 156 experience point. 732 turns ago. And strength and stuff there. If my final status, I was hungry. I was un unencumbered. And I had a two-handed sword. You were poison resistant. You were warded. And you are dead. Oh, harsh. Do you want an account of the creatures vanquish? Sure. And there's all the things that I killed in this battle. 26 creatures, a lot of gnomes and other things there. See your conduct? Uh, you went without food. I never did eat anything for health. Health. You were an atheist. You can do prayers to things. There is religion and gods and stuff and spells. I never did that, so I, they call me an atheist. I never read any uh, spell books or scrolls, so it calls me illiterate. I never genocided any monsters. I never polymorphed an object. You can do that. Never changed formed, and I use no wishes. Just from the things I didn't do, you can tell that there's a lot to this. Do you want to see the dungeon overview? Okay. And these are the things that basically I went through. And as a final thing, there's my headstone. Rest in peace, Brian. 442 killed by a gnome in 2019, and it gives a few more stats. And if you really wanted to, you could print that out and hang it on your wall and let people think you're a real geek, which is kind of cool. More, and there's my top 10 list. That's the best game I've had in the last couple. And that's all, the end. Okay, so I had intended to play two or three very short games, but that went out to be one longer one because it went on longer than expected. So that gives you an idea. If you're into Diablo or games like that, which are dungeon exploration games where you find treasures, kill monsters, and explore, there's a lot to this one that I didn't cover. The spells are crazy. The, the magic items are just almost unlimited in number. It's just a very, very deep game. Again, just the keyboard commands alone are kind of crazy. But the combinations and the interactions, there is a lot to this. I'd say try out NetHack, see what you think. If you enjoy it, there are hundreds and hundreds of other games similar to NetHack. Also, just do a search for roguelike games. There's a lot of them that are graphical, not necessarily just text like this one, but there are a lot of text ones also. They're relatively easy to code, and there are people who make their own versions of this just for fun. Check it out. I'll have the link in the show notes below. And if you want to like and subscribe, I'll have something new for you next week. And of course, if you can't wait, pick up Going Text, wherever all good books are sold. Otherwise, I'll see you next week.